I think when I first heard the demos, it was, I mean, it was 33 years ago, so we were working it out backstage. And I'd been, I think I'd just come off uh, Heaven 17 album, and we'd been quite successful with that, and it was very programmed, and everything was very computed. Anything that was live had to be imported, so we were bringing in session musicians, and, and a few years before that, I'd been working with Pink Floyd on the wall, with Gilmore and you know, I mean, Gilmore was my idol. And when I heard the, the TV2 songs, I, I just suddenly thought, there's, there's real musicianship here, and it's certainly worth going to Copenhagen and having a word with them. You know? And we, we came over, and I saw them live, and I saw Eric playing, and I heard Stefan singing, and Stefan's voice kind of cuts through any amount of noise that you make around it. It's a very unique voice. And George's bass is very fundamental. Um, spend, and, and all the components were there. Everything was there. And I thought, this would be a really great album to do. And the other thing I really liked about it was all the demos had been written, all the songs had been written. So I could actually hear what the album was going to be before we even got into the studio. Um, and then Universal, I think it was Universal then, I can't remember, but they took, took us down to Pook Studios, which is, at the time, it was definitely the best studio in the world. Um, and I, I, I don't think there's ever been a studio that was as good as that studio was. Um, and just the, the combination of, of everyone, the, the band had great view, I mean, I fell in that. You, we became great friends instantly, and I just thought, yeah, this is something I'd really like to do, and I love being in Copenhagen, so, yeah, it was a, yeah. a no-brainer. I was very concerned in, I think it's Tintin, where the Mercedes 300D yeah. with those windscreen wipers, and I'm sure the sample we used was from a 150E. I, <laughs> um, he, we've never really got into lyrics too much. Uh, it, 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 there's... Stefan's voice has got loads of colours, um, and you know when it's romantic, and you know when it's aggressive, and you know when he's saying something important, and you know when he's saying fun, just from the sound. I mean, I don't understand any of the language at all. And the chords he writes. So we've always worked on the principle, actually, that it, it's up to him to tell me if I'm going the wrong way. And, and generally, we just find that the music I mean, music communicates over many, many different levels. It's, it's not just the vocal context. It's the, the chords, the tempo, mm. the aggression in the play. But it's also your job as a producer to, to say to the vocalist that, well, the word you use right there is, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, it doesn't communicate with the chords I or the atmosphere. I, would, I wouldn't dare do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not with Stefan. No, but with, but with a lot of other writers. Yes, yes. <laughs> but with, with Stefan, if the word sounds wrong, then it's the music that's gone wrong. I, I love the band, I love the guys. Um, and, you know, mu music is a, a strange art form because it's, it's a collaborative art form. Okay, Stefan holds the paintbrush. Mm. But the painting that actually comes out of that is as much to do with Eric, as much to do with George, as much to do with Sven, um, Stefan, and myself, and Henrik, our engineer, who I've worked with really since I've been working in Denmark. Um, and ev everyone, I think the important thing about being a producer is uh, you, you've got to keep your mind open. At the end goal. It's, it's not my record, you know. I, I'm there to make the best record that TV2 can make. And sometimes in a in a in a musical situation, you know, what you think you know how to do isn't always the best thing you can do. Um, it, you have this kind of conscious side of your brain that says, scared of C, C B E F G A B C. And then you have the unconscious side of your brain that you have no control over whatsoever. And the important thing in, in any musician is to get them, I mean, 
about, we sat in, in the studio and we actually worked out between us that we had 250 years of experience in the music together. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our knowledge of, of, for the time, I mean, we're all getting a bit rickety, but 250 years, and if you go back linearly on that and you just make it one lifetime's experience, that takes us back to Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> so a, along, along that pathway, we've all learned something but we, our conscious brains might not have remembered it, but it's there in the unconscious. And so when you start playing and you think you've made a mistake or you think you've pay, played a howlingly wrong chord, sometimes actually it's the right chord. And it's, it's that back, and, and someone has to be in the room and say, no, 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 that wasn't a mistake. That's, that's great. We should, we, let's keep going that way, you know. So, and I love working with them because they have enormous patience with me. You know, I'm, I have infinite patience with everyone I'm working with, but not everyone has the patience that, that I need to, to allow us to, to get there in the end, you know.